These are the 10 most insane police chases on the internet. Make sure to drop a like and try not to run away from the cops or else you'll end up like number 10. Okay, so what really sets his first chase off for most is the fact that not only are the cops chasing down a literal school bus, but its driver is actually a student at the very school from which the bus was stolen from. Airing on A&E's Live PD, this juvenile driver was barely old enough to be behind the wheel, let alone handling a 26 passenger bus. Considering he was already bound to be charged, this young driver decided to swerve all over the road, at one point even heading into oncoming traffic. However, rather than colliding with the traffic on the other side of the road, our bus thief decided to go for a uh, different target. Yeah, thankfully nobody was seriously injured in this crash and the kid was apprehended by police shortly afterwards. If this kid ever wanted to steal a car again, let's just hope he looks for a game like GTA for his thrills rather than actually doing it in real life. But anyways, on to number nine. As far as police chases go, it's not uncommon to see a biker who isn't really keen on following speed limits enforced on highways. For this driver though, he wanted to do a little more than go fast as he evaded police custody, and rather than keeping his eyes on the road and attempting to truly escape the cops, he kinda wanted to show off a little. High speed chase, but when he put his feet on the seat, that was more than some could stand. Look at this guy, look at this guy, look at this, look at this! He is totally- I mean, I guess if he's going to jail anyway, he might as well make it a ride worth talking about once he gets put behind bars. Crazy part is, the culprit in question actually thought it was strange that the police tried to kick him off his bike during his joyride. Regardless of if he agreed with it or not, the guy was inevitably caught and promptly paid the price for his reckless antics. Old Philip Resendez was arrested for felony evading and driving the wrong way. What do you mean you didn't endanger anybody? You were standing on your bike going 100 miles per hour. At the end of the day, nobody was hurt and the guy apologized to his two daughters before being booked for his crimes. While he did walk away with a one-of-a-kind story to tell, I doubt it was worth the time spent in jail. Number 8. Imagine you're out on a family road trip, you know, RVing across the country. You stop at a place to rest and relax when some crazy lady hops in your RV and, uh... It was a demolition derby. Oh my gosh. Look at this. this is a chunk of the RV was ripped away. To make matters worse here, the lady brought her two dogs in the vehicle with her while she went for a dangerous joyride, and it gets really scary when one of the dogs does this. Her dog. There's Fido out there. On He's the staring there, out of the of gaping the, uh, hole. Even the dog uh, can't believe it. What, He's had enough. Stream. Out he and, goes. Uh, you know, oh! Oh my god! I mean, thankfully the pup limps away, but if this woman wasn't already in enough trouble with the police, considering her dog jumped out like that, I'm sure she's catching flack from PETA as well. She goes on to ram into other vehicles, leaving a trail of destruction before one crash makes her chase come to a screeching halt. The only serious injury was to the pup that jumped from the car, who then had to wear a pair of casts on its front and back legs until making a recovery. If this lady is ever allowed to drive away again, I just hope that she decides to keep the pooch as far away from any of the action. Number 7. If you were ever trying to outpace and escape the police, I'd imagine some of us would do just about anything to get away. Whether that be driving along the same highway at high speeds for hours on end, or even doing something as insane as boarding a moving train. I had to stop for this train. We are following this. Now, the person, person just got, got out and, and ran. ran. It looks right like somebody else is in the tracks. back of the vehicle, too. But again, this person has jumped out running on foot. Yeah, at the end of the day, you've got to commend this guy's resolve in not getting caught. I mean, really, who here can honestly say that they would chase down a moving train just to board it in an attempt to evade the cops? Like, the man just sneaks aboard the scrap train and rides it for a while before ditching it to take off on foot. They're in the back seat as well. But again, this person running right along the railroad tracks, very close there. You almost wonder if he's going to try to jump onto the train right there. Look, and while the other two folks in the back of his car had already been apprehended by this point, this guy just kept on running until he was inevitably caught by police later that day. Well, obviously none of us can condone his actions. I'm sure we can all respect the effort put in by this guy trying to escape. The man literally jumped onto a moving train. Number six. If there's one thing we've all done while playing the Grand Theft Auto series, it's easily spinning out and crashing during a police chase. Naturally, the main vehicles following you are, of course, police cruisers, and while some of us just grab another pedestrian's car, the rest of us run straight for a cop car instead. So, when this guy totaled the first vehicle he stole, the next closest car just so happened to be that of the very officers who were meant to apprehend him. Control smart cookies in general. And, uh, seeing what's what is he doing? Here. Oh, oh no. no. This did not happen. Oh. No. 
No. Suspect did no. not come no. here to CHP He's car. In a, oh. Somehow he manages to evade the cops and even take off with one of their cruisers, and that's not even the worst of it. To the woman who was on her hands and knees, both leaving Definitely. their cars. And there's another and there's officer that, that just clueless. He doesn't even know. He doesn't know. Oh, this is... Do they not have to I mean, you can't really blame the officer who keeps on going here. Like, how in the world would you ever expect that your peers would let a suspect get away and with one of their own vehicles? Well, I say get away, but the chase only continued on for like another 20 minutes before the crook was arrested. So while his maneuvers were pretty tactical, they didn't exactly pay off in the end. Number five. The typical signs of a police chase are cars moving rapidly at high speeds while occasionally causing a bit of havoc and even some destruction while trying to evade custody. For this chase though, we're veering off on a uh, different path. Rather than stepping down on the gas as hard as he could, this driver opted to do the exact opposite. Car chase, but this one may be the slowest ever. Fort Worth police followed the white Nissan for more than two hours. The suspect in no hurry to escape, crowds of gawkers gathered on overpass. You ever hear the song Slow Ride? It kind of does indicate to take it easy, but this takes the lyric to a whole new level. This driver even cultivates a crowd waving to those behind the road, acting as if it was his like, own parkway parade. And while this guy lives it up, he's got those police trailing at a similar speed until eventually the driver decides to kick it into high gear. And went the wrong way down an access road to get back on the interstate. Then enough is enough. A police SWAT car performed a pit maneuver and rammed the back of the suspect's car, causing it to slam into a concrete median. After he's detained by police, it was revealed that the car was chock full of methamphetamine and that the driver was, of course, under the influence. And that probably explains why he eventually tried to make a break for it. Number four. So far on this list, we've seen people try to escape the police on trains and RVs and even in other officers' cars. However, one thing we've yet to see and will likely not see for some time is a culprit trying to get away on his longboard. Traffic clutching the longboard. And then came the move worthy of a movie, yeah. if only it had worked. For five seconds, the suspect tried to skateboard away from officers in hot pursuit on foot. Before all this, the man was being pursued by police in a car he'd previously stolen before crashing into the back of another driver's vehicle. Knowing he'd be caught if he did nothing, he did the first thing that came to his mind and tried to carve his name in the history books by attempting his own version of the Great Escape. With that in mind though, if I were this guy, I probably would have just thrown it away and ran as fast as I could, but... And again, regardless of what method he used, there was no escaping the long arm of the law. Police were closing in. The same red pickup cut him off and practically pinned him. Whoa! Who's that guy? Next time he decides to try and evade the police, I just hope he brings something a little quicker than a longboard as a backup plan. Number three. In most police chases, people start in a car and end up running on foot, but this chase begins on foot as the criminal was originally caught and was being treated on a stretcher near an ambulance. But right before he was processed and cuffed, he opted to jump up and take the emergency vehicle for a spin. Police say they shot him three times as he reversed and hit two officers in uniform. For almost 90 minutes, Givorowski leads police on a tour of Frankfurt and Cotman Avenues and side streets around the boulevard. It takes a uh, special kind of person to take an ambulance, you know, vehicle typically used for transporting the sick or injured, and instead use it as a getaway car. Then again, considering he was going to be charged for assault anyway, it makes his desperate attempt at escape seem a little more understandable. But regardless of whatever vehicle he decided to steal, it was bound to need a tow after the chase. For four minutes, he tries to get in front of Givorowski. His persistence pays. He flattens a front tire before spinning out. Finally got the right tire and he still was going. He was down like 15 miles an hour. Yeah, this tow truck driver is definitely a hero for his actions here because shortly after he popped the guy's front right tire, a spike strip finished a job making it easy for the police to get the criminal back in custody. And while the chase only went on for like 20 minutes or so, it definitely would have lasted much longer if it weren't for this truck driver showing up to work early. Talk about dedication. Number two. All right, if you can't tell by now, these chases come in all shapes and sizes, but the very last person you'd ever expect to see behind the wheel, well, are little kids. In the case of this seven-year-old, he had his first encounter with the law on a bright Sunday morning. Cooper County Sheriff's patrol car as the deputy followed the boy, unaware of just how young that driver was. It was a wild ride, but the little guy never went over 35. And while you can't really tell that it's a kid with him just driving along, it gets a lot easier to see once he pulls up to his family's driveway. <laughs> They'll never find me under the bed. And if I were to categorize the, the, the boy's skill as a driver. The kid just ran right inside and told his dad that the cops were outside without giving him literally any context. 
So when the officer went ahead and told the dad what his son had been up to before church, she was just as confused as any of us probably would be in that situation. I mean, in all fairness to the kid, when I was young, I remember always wanting to know how it felt to kind of like jump behind the wheel of a car. And while nowadays it's become a regular part of life for most of us, to this seven year old, it must have been an exhilarating experience. I mean, fair play to the kid. Honestly, it's just impressive that he came out of it uninjured and that he actually managed to drive pretty well for being seven. Next time, let's just hope he waits until he's at least 16 before taking his folks car out for a spin. Finally coming in at our number one spot, we're taking a look across the pond to a pursuit that happened in London, England. Conventionally, if you're trying to escape police custody, your vehicle of choice would usually be something small and fast, right? Well, for this intoxicated driver, he opted for something with a little more destructive power to go about on his rampage. Um, it's just prior to the uh, north end sort of roundabout. Like I mentioned before, our driver here is under the influence, meaning that he likely has no regard for anyone else on the road. With that in mind, you can imagine he's not exactly the most careful when trying to avoid the very cops that are chasing him. Yeah, it's still got an officer. You need to get yourself out of sight. If he sees you, he'll go for you. Already has done once before. He goes on to hit several other police cruisers along his trail of carnage. You see what I did there? Okay, kind of cringe. Well, anyway, of course the driver was inevitably caught by police, but not before he caused plenty of damage to all of those police cars who decided to get in the way of his 12 ton dump truck destruction. Thankfully, that was the majority of the damage caused by this insane chase, and fortunately for everyone involved, no one was seriously injured. But hey, click on screen right now to check out this video. This has been Tommy, keep it here on Top 5 Central.